So by the end of this video, you're going to understand how to do basic rigging like this for charts without doing a lot of manual work. Everything I show you in this video is going to save you hours of time, and you might think you have to do all of this by hand, but there's actually a lot of shortcuts you can take. At the very end, I'm going to show you how to polish everything and give it that Vox feel. So let's get started. So real quick, I've already made my axes here, and I'm just going to go over the most important concepts I want you to take away from this video. So the first thing is, uh, doing these labels on the left side, I know I want to have 20 text labels, and a real quick way we could do that is we could come over here and just put in our first label, and instead of having to type each year incrementing by 2 by hand, since we have to do about 20 of those, we could just duplicate them all like this. And each time you duplicate one, you could grab them both and copy and paste once more, and just do this until you have 20. Okay, so once you're at number 20, go ahead and take your last one and put it in the position you want it to be in. So I want mine to be down here at the bottom of the graph, so I'm just going to do that. Then I'm going to zoom out here, and I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to come over here on my alignment panel, and I'm going to do distribute vertically. So next, we need to actually get these all to be the correct date. So like I said, I wanted to start at 1990, so we're just going to add an expression on this first layer over here. Come under the source text and hit alt. So we're going to write a real simple math expression to set each one to what it should be. So since I wanted to start at 1980, I'm going to do 1980 plus 20 since we have 20 layers minus whichever index we're on times 4 to give it that 4 year increment. So since this is layer 20, it's going to do 20 minus 20 times 4 which is 0 so it's just going to be 1980. So on this next one, it's going to do 20 minus 19 which is 1 times 4 which is 4. So this one will be set to 1984 and it's going to traverse that all the way up our layers. So once we confirm that, we can go ahead and see it set it to 1980. So now we could copy this and just paste it on every single text layer we have. And as you can see, we're now getting an increment by four for each year. So the next thing I noticed is that these are a little bit out of alignment. So I'm just going to go ahead and select them all. And I'm going to come over here and select align to the right. Then I'm just going to adjust the position on these a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these numbers and I'm going to hit control shift C selecting the second option to send them into their own pre-comp. So I went ahead and did the same thing on the other side. I adjusted the expression just slightly to look like this to count it down from 95 to 0. So I'm going to take all of this and pre-comp it here as well. Okay, so next we need to actually have our data points and I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do this as well. So you want to create your first shape up here at the very top. And it doesn't matter which size because we're going to come back and change that later. The most important thing is to click the Y tool and grab the anchor point and come up here and bring it to the very bottom of this shape. You also want to come in here to the contents and select the rectangle path and you have an anchor point in here as well. Make sure that's also at the very end. Now just like we did before you could go ahead and duplicate this 20 times. So now to actually add the data for each one, you want to come to the layer, select it, hit command tilde and that's going to drop it down. Select this rectangle path and then you're just going to set it to the size that you want. So you want to make sure you're using the rectangle path and you're not actually using the layer size uh, because you'll see why later we're going to use that as a controller to actually animate these all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these. Okay so I went ahead and did all of that and this next part's going to be actually pretty simple. So I'm going to come new and I'm going to add a controller for this. So I'm going to add a new object and I'm going to rename this data controller. And I'm going to set this to green just so it's easy to see. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these layers. I'm going to hit S to open up the scale. I'm going to hold alt to write an expression and I'm going to take the property pip whip and pip whip it to the data controller's scale. So we need to open the scale here as well. And I'm going to unlink these here. So now if we change the scale here, it should be changing the scale on our layer as well. So I'm going to take this expression and copy and paste it to every single layer. So since I had all of these layers set to 80% on the layer scale, I'm just going to add that back here so they're not as big. And now if we come here, we can set a keyframe for our scale. And we can have this keyframe in here, we can have it store at something like 0. And now if we play that back, I'm going to give it an easy ease. We can see all of our data is coming in at once. So it looks like when I was setting my layers, I accidentally did the layer style and not the rectangle. So I'm just going to go back and fix those. So now if we play it back, they should all be working correctly. So we could come into the speed graph editor and we could just give it a slowdown at the end so it's not so abrupt. Now that we have this done, it's just a matter of flipping it for the next side. So I'm going to go ahead, select all of these, uh, do control shift C, create a pre-comp. And I'm going to come into my composition window and I'm going to duplicate these and I'm going to rename this one to be red bars. And since we duplicated this in our project panel, it's not going to be linked to anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of these and I'm just going to change the fill to be a red color. 
And a real easy way to flip this is just instead of going to positive 100, we're now just going to go to negative 100. So now if we play it back, we're getting the same thing on the other side. So now we could come in and bring our red bars in. So I think that's looking pretty good now. Now we can go back to our print comp. So I'm just going to select these. I'm going to send them to the on print comp as well. And we're going to call this chart final. So now that we have this chart as a pre-comp, we can really do anything we want. So I want to start zooming in as the data comes in. So I'm going to create a position and scale keyframe, and I'm just going to come way into it. And we're going to follow one of these lines. So as it gets to about right here, I want to come all the way back out to the center. So I think it looks pretty good. I'm just going to time it a little bit better. That's really all you need to know with the charts. The rest of this just comes from uh, doing the font and the style and the colors and everything like that, which I'm not going to go over in this tutorial. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, check out my other videos here.